Hello from ChemHelp ASAP. This video describes the discovery of MRTX 1719, which is a modulator of PRMT5 with potential application for certain types of cancer. This video reports the discovery program of MRTX 1719 as described in a drug annotations article in the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry by scientists at Marathi Therapeutics in San Diego, California. The citation is at the bottom of the screen and a link to the article can be found in the video description. As with almost any drug discovery program, there are many abbreviations. Let's describe the main ones here. PRMT5 stands for Protein Arginine Methyltransferase 5. This is a protein in cells that mediates many key methylation reactions. MEP50 is methylosome protein 50, which forms an active methylation complex with PRMT5. MTAP is methylthioadenosine phosphorylase. Certain cancer cell lines lack the MTAP gene. These are MTAP or MTAP deleted cells. MTA is methylthioadenosine. MTA tends to build to high concentrations in MTAP deleted cells. MTA binds and shuts down the methylation activity of the PRMT5 MEP50 complex. SAM is S adenosylmethionine, which binds to and serves as a cofactor for PRMT5 MEP50. All of these proteins and molecules are part of the same pathway. Let's diagram the pathway. Here we go, we'll start over on the left. PRMT5 and MEP50 bind and form the PRMT5 MEP50 complex. This complex can in turn bind the cofactor SAM to form PRMT5 SAM. PRMT5 SAM performs key methylation reactions in cells and is required for proper cellular function. While PRMT5 MEP50 does bind to SAM, it can also bind to MTA to form PRMT5 MTA. PRMT5 MTA is inactive. This is part of the pathway that is particularly important in MTAP deleted cells, which have higher concentrations of MTA. So in MTAP deleted cells, and these are tumor cells, a large portion of PRMT5 is bound up in the PRMT5 MTA complex. The cells have decreased methylation activity. These are vital methylation reactions. The PRMT5 MTA complex represents a potential drug target that is only found in tumor cells. Furthermore, binding and providing additional stabilization to this complex may further engage available PRMT5 in the tumor cells further block methylation processes and lead to death of the tumor cell. We have now described the goal of the Marathi drug campaign. Selectively bind PRMT5 MTA and kill MTAP deleted tumor cells. Marathi is not the only company working in this pathway, but Marathi reports that they are one of the few focused on PRMT5 MTA. Note that this discovery program is built upon knowledge of the intended drug target. We will see over and over again in this video how access to PRMT5 MTA and its structural information helped to advance the campaign. To start the campaign, the scientists needed to screen molecules for activity. The program emphasized fragment sized molecules with molecular weights in the range of 150 to 300 grams per mole. The primary screening assay measured binding to the PRMT5 MTA complex. Because fragments are so small, their target affinity tends to be low and their dissociation binding constant, KD, is often large, perhaps in the range of 10 micromolar to 1 millimolar. Marathi used SPR, surface plasmon resonance, as a method for measuring these weak binding affinities. The screen included control compounds from the literature to ensure the assay was operating properly. 
Marathi screened between 2,500 and 3,000 fragments across three different libraries, with the early screening results informing which fragments would be included in the next screen. Compounds were tested at a single, con single concentration. The initial screen generated a pool of 24 hits that were advanced for further study. At this stage, hits have been selected based on their activity for PRMT5 MTA, but the campaign was aiming for preferential binding of PRMT5 MTA over PRMT5 SAM. Therefore, the discovery group measured not only PRMT5 MTA binding, but also PRMT5 SAM, again with SPR. Keep in mind that compounds that bind PRMT5-SAM will likely affect methylation processes in healthy cells. PRMT5-SAM binding is off-target activity. The ratio of the two KD values provided an early measure for selectivity, which should correlate with toxicity. The KD values for all 24 hits against both targets were determined. The 24 hits had binding ratios from 0.2 to 35. A binding ratio greater than 1 indicated a preference for PRMT5 MTA. Less than 1 was associated with a preference for PRMT5 SAM. One fragment hit stood out to the research team. Fragment F1 shown to the right, had a moderately high binding ratio of 5.1 and a fairly small KD of just 10 micromolar. The team was able to solve an x-ray structure of a co-crystal between PRMT5-MTA and F1. The structure has been deposited in the protein data bank as entry 7S0U. Before we look at the co-crystal, take note of the structure of F1. We have an amino group with a bicyclic ring. One ring has two nitrogens and a carbonyl, and the other ring is just a benzene ring. Here is part of the co-crystal structure. In the middle of the screen, with the darker gray lines, is F1, our fragment hit. Surrounding our frag fragment, are white lines for the nearby amino acids from the PRMT5 MTA complex. Most of the protein has been hidden to make the interactions between F1 and the PRMT5 MTA complex more clear. The dotted lines between F1 and the protein complex are intermolecular forces. The blue dotted lines, which are mostly associated with the nitrogens and carbonyls of the carbonyl of F1, are strong hydrogen bonds. The green dotted lines, mostly associated with the benzene ring, are weaker contact forces. For such a small molecule, F1 is actually very effectively bound by PRMT5 MTA. While F1 has promising affinity, the affinity is much weaker than a typical drug. The structure of F1 needs to be modified to further improve affinity. To this end, the Marathi scientists recognized that the benzene ring of F1 was oriented toward additional parts of the binding pocket. New analogs with groups off of the benzene ring should further increase affinity. Before making more molecules, the discovery team needed to move from the SPR binding assay to a functional assay that would measure actual PRMT5 inhibition. The team started with a known biochemical assay for PRMT5 MEP50 inhibition. In one assay variation, SAM was included in the medium, but MTA was not. This variation simulates healthy cells, allows PRMT5 SAM formation, and permits measuring a test compound's IC50 for PRMT5 SAM. This is the MTA negative assay. The MTA positive assay includes MTA, which simulates MTAP deleted cells and allows estimation of an IC50 for PRMT5 MTA. So the desired outcome is to find compounds with low IC50 values in the MTA positive assay and a high 
IC50 MTA negative to ICA50 MTA positive ratio as a sign of higher selectivity. This biochemical assay is not perfect, but was intended as a placeholder until compound potencies had been sufficiently optimized for a cellular functional assay. While potency and efficacy are important to measure, the scientist's overall goal was development of an oral drug, so new compounds were also tested for membrane permeability, which can help predict oral availability. The assay used MDCK cells, maiden Darby canine kidney cells, with multi-drug resistance 1 protein. MDR is a transporter protein. Transporter proteins like MDR1 are found in the lining of the GI tract and can diminish oral absorption of a drug. The assay allows measurement of diffusion both into a cell, influx, the A to B value, and out of a cell, efflux, the B to A value. A higher A to B value is a sign of high membrane permeability. If the ratio of these two assay results B to A over A to B, the efflux ratio, is greater than 1, then the molecule may be transported by MDR1 and at risk for lower oral absorption. Okay, let's now see some new analogs of fragment hit F1 with groups added to fill in more of the binding pocket. Here are some data for F1 and four new analogs. All have a substituent in the 6th position of the original hit. So F1 has just a hydrogen at the 6th position. F1 showed no measurable inhibition in the cellular assay. Adding a phenyl group gives compound 2. I see 50 values in the MTA positive and MTA negative assays dropped considerably with some selectivity for PRMT5 MTA over PRMT5 SAM. Permeability was favorable with an attractively low efflux ratio. Compounds 3, 8, and 9 had further elaboration of the ring. In compound 9, the IC50 for the MTA positive assay dropped to sub-micromolar levels, and the MTA negative to MTA positive ratio was fairly high. Permeability and efflux were also within reason. On the screen, we have a view of the co-crystal of fragment F1 and PRMT5 MTA. Compound 9 is shown to the right. With the addition of the five-membered ring in compound 9, this one right here, the researchers have extended this structure to fill out this void in the lower left of the binding pocket. I don't want to spoil the surprise too much, but the binding pocket also has unfilled volume in this region, extending the structure of the lead off of the new five-membered ring in this particular position became the next focus of the lead optimization team. Now that the compounds have higher potency, the researchers introduce a cellular assay to determine efficacy and potency. The assay used HCT16 cells, a colon cancer cell line, and the assay was performed with either a wild type or MTAP deleted strain. Remember that the goal of de is development of a molecule that inhibits methylation processes to kill tumor cells. So the assay involved both monitoring methylation after four days of incubation as well as cell viability at 10 days. Each compound was tested at multiple concentrations to generate a concentration response curve for IC50 calculation. Researchers also added another in vitro ADME assay, this time a metabolic stability assay in which compounds were exposed to either human or mouse hepatocytes. This type of metabolic assay measures intrinsic clearance which gives insight into oral availability and half-life. Different research teams have different target cutoff values in assays. The Marathi team was hoping to find molecules with an intrinsic clearance in human hepatocytes less than 20 milliliters per minute per kilogram. Here are the data from additional functionalization 
of the core scaffold. The chemist started by adding a phenyl group as seen in compound 15 with subsequent refinement of the groups on the ring to generate a series of molecules. We're just looking at a small subset of all the molecules. In methylation inhibition, the SDMA column, we see the IC50 values in the MTAP deleted cells dropped dramatically while the IC50 in the wild type cells was relatively unchanged or even increased. The same general trend, though not as dramatic, was seen in the viability results. Intrinsic clearance in human hepatocytes was generally low, below 20 mils per minute per kg. The only concerning results were for permeability. Permeability decreased in the series, while efflux increased, even increased dramatically. While there were some reasons for concern, Overall, these data were very encouraging and indicated that new analogs were selectively inhibiting methylation and reducing viability in the tumor cells over healthy cells. Compound 27, the most active compound in this table, needs some additional discussion. Compound 27 exists as a mixture of stereoisomers, specifically Atrobisomers. Atrobisomers are, according to Wikipedia, stereoisomers arising because of hindered rotation about a single bond. Normally, single bonds display free rotation at room temperature. This particular CC bond, however, the adjacent substituents on the two connected rings prevent rotation about the CC bond. Compound 27 was prepared as a racemic mixture with both of these atrobisomers, which are enantiomers. The enantiomers were separated by chiral chromatography and tested individually. The researchers observed that essentially all the favorable activity seen in racemic 27 was due to the isomer on the left, M27. Upon unraveling the stereochemistry of compounds like 27, the Marathi scientists had identified several potent, potent compounds and wanted to explore in vivo behavior. Let's first look at the in vivo PK data. The researchers studied the pharmacokinetics of 18, M27, and M31 in the mouse. Based on low bioavailability in the mouse, 18 was dropped from subsequent studies. M27 and M31 were further studied in the rat and monkey. Of these two compounds, M27 had several advantages. A lower clearance in both species, as well as a longer half-life and higher bioavailability in the monkey. Compound M27 became the primary lead. A longer half-life and higher bioavailability should help in achieving efficacious exposure in a once-per-day oral treatment. Note that the reasonable bioavailability of these compounds may be surprising given the high efflux ratios observed in the in vitro permeability assays. The researchers suspected that the efflux transporters were perhaps saturated at the tested doses, so the impact of the high efflux ratios was not as severe as anticipated. Let's now see some in vivo efficacy data. Here are two readouts for the in vivo efficacy of M27 in a mouse xenograft disease model. In other words, M27 is treating a human tumor cell line in a mouse. More specifically, this study was performed on a lung cancer cell line. The chart on the left shows the SDMA signal on the y-axis. The SDMA signal is a measure of the methylation activity within the tumor. In the untreated vehicle group, Methylation was uninhibited with a normalized observed activity level of 100%. As the daily oral dose of M27 was increased in mice from 12.5 to 25 and 50 and even 100 mg per kg, the SDMA signal dropped steadily from about 14% all the way down to 2% at the highest dose. 2% SDMA activity implies 98% inhibition by M27. 
Researchers also monitored the volume of the tumor in a three-week study in mice with the intent of determining whether M27 slowed the growth of the tumor. The starting tumor volume was on average about 200 cubic millimeters. The tumor volume increased to just about 2,000 millimeter, cubic millimeters in the untreated vehicle group. So that's zero migs per kg. In the 12 and a half mig per kg group, the tumor volumes finished on average around 800 cubic millimeters. So that's 12.5 mg per kg. In the 25 mg per kg group, tumor volume finished close to 500. So that's the 25. In both the 50 and 100 mg per kg groups, the final tumor volume was around 300 cubic millimeters. Tumor growth was inhibited in a dose-dependent manner with once-per-day oral dosing, and the magnitude of the effect seems to be reached below the highest tested dose. Based on the discussed data, the research team has gathered evidence that M27 inhibits PRMT5-dependent methylation in MTAP-deleted cells based on both in vitro and in vivo studies. M27, also called MRTX1719, was named a development candidate with the initiation of additional studies to allow clinical trials. These additional studies likely include preclinical safety and preformulation activities required to enable testing in the clinic. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this drug discovery story. Please consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, or making a comment. Take care.